Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining us and welcome to today's webinar, uh, which is focusing in around buying and selling your animals and all your advice around buying and selling animals in 2021. Uh, so my name is Owen Maloney, and um, as usual, I'm I'm the host of the Herdwatch webinars here, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Rob Hume from Dundee and Adverts.ie. Rob is general manager at both Dundee and Adverts, and we're also joined this evening as well by your own James Grevy, who's head of innovation here at Herdwatch. So thanks a million for joining us this evening, lads. How are you keeping? Good. Thanks, Owen. Very good. You're very welcome. Um, no, thanks for taking the time to help out this evening. So um, we're going to be hearing a lot more from both James and Rob, uh, I suppose, over the next half an hour or so. The lads are, are, are going to be on hand to give some really, really good expert advice around all things got to do with, you know, buying animals, selling animals online and how to create really, really good adverts um, on, on online platforms like Dundee. So before I hand over to James, uh, who's going to take over first, um, just for anybody that's maybe on their first Birdwatch webinar, um, or has just maybe recently got themselves set up on Herdwatch. Just like to tell you a little bit about what we do and what the benefits of Herdwatch are. So Herdwatch is just a really simple solution which allows you to reduce your farm paperwork and, and I suppose the time that it takes you to record your compliance paperwork, but it also allows you to make a lot better decisions on your farm, mostly based on the information that you're going to be putting into the Herdwatch app. Um, so we're all about allowing you to, to save time, um, especially around your paperwork, and make better decisions on your farm, and also give you back time to maybe do other things on the farm that you maybe consider more important, be your time with the family or doing other jobs around your farm. So since our launch uh, in 2014, which over seven years ago now at this point, um, Herdwatch has, has moved on to become the market leading um, app in both Ireland and the UK. And we now have over 14 and a half thousand members using our app and our, our software in Ireland, Northern Ireland and across the water in the UK. Um, in that time, we've managed to amass over 1.9 million animals that have been synced into our, our app system from all the relevant departments in the countries that we that we provide our service in. So here in Ireland, we're linked in directly with Ag Food. Uh, up north, uh, it's it's with APHIS, so we're able to get your animals and her details from APHIS. And over in the UK, we, we link in directly with BCMS as well. In that time, we've we've managed to surpass 1.6 million calves as well that have been registered using the Herdwatch app, which is a huge milestone for us. Um, um, and this is a number, I suppose, that we're hoping to grow significantly again over the coming weeks and months. Um, but it's a huge number, and it's it's something that's made farmers' lives an awful lot easier when it comes to their calves and, and registering their calves. We also have over 12 million records that have been recorded over those seven years and um, that have been securely backed up and are looked after for our, our members and our users. Um, and those records include everything from calf registration to medicine and treatment records, movements, weights, and all sorts of other records um, that, that our users have created and saved on our app. So James, we're nearly ready to hand over to you. So um, before we do, just a quick overview for everybody of what we're going to cover in the next 30 minutes or so. Um, James has taken over here first and he's going to give some really good advice, with some great slides prepared around everything got to do with, you know, buying and selling your animals. Um, he's going to give you some insights into, you know, where are farmers selling cattle at the moment? And like I said, just some general advice for buying and selling. Uh, he's also going to tell you about the new Verified by Herdwatch um, and give you some, some details on that. At that point, then we're going to hand over to yourself, Rob. And Rob has some great slides ready to go as well, um, with uh, more advice as well uh, around farm to farm sales, you know, where animals are being bought and sold, and how to create a great ad uh, to sell your animals online. Um, we'll then finish with a quick demo of Herdwatch on how to create your, your verified ad and also some questions and answers. So, um, as usual, if you've been on the webinars before, um, we have a, a, a chat area there. So, if you have any questions for Rob or for James or for myself in relation to Herdwatch, you know, feel free to use the chat um, to pop in your questions. We're going to leave a couple of minutes at the end of the webinar to answer any questions that come in. And we do have Mervyn uh, helping out here again this evening. So he's going to try and answer as many questions as he can throughout the webinar. Um, so yeah, keep the questions coming and we'll spend a few minutes at the end answering as many as we possibly can. So James, you're up um, if you're ready to go. And uh, I know you've plenty of stuff ready to go. Thanks, Owen. So I suppose I'm just going to kick things off by giving uh, 
everyone on the webinar an overview of Herdwatch and I suppose the innovation that we've carried out for farmers throughout our our uh, short life in this world. Uh, so Herdwatch is seven years old as an organization based basically as of uh, last week or week before. And I suppose it's been a journey of constant innovation for farmers, listening to them, the problems that they're experiencing and, and then implementing features or solutions to try and remove those blocks for farmers, whether it's the case of, I suppose when we launched way back in 2014 about creating a, a simple way to register your calves to try and reduce the workload in springtime as you know, most of our dairy farmers are already in the take of it now and super farmers will be getting into, into it over the next week or two. Uh, simplifying the calf registrations, the movements, I suppose we then kind of realized that those uh, farmers in the UK had similar issues. So in 2016, we launched over there and we started um, delivering an app for them to help them simplify how they manage their farm. And I suppose her watch has been constantly evolving, listening to the, the issues that farmers have had to the point where in 2018, we launched a new feature that allowed farmers to literally scan in their medicines as they were as they were buying them in the shop uh, or the vets or the, the agri store. And I suppose it's kind of continued along then we allow farmers then to record. I suppose we realized that missing tags was, and unfortunately still remains one of the largest uh, non-compliance issues on farms today. So when a farmer has an inspection, it turns out a cohort of his animals don't have either one or both of their tags and not being able to get those tags in in time for an inspection was actually causing large more non-compliances. So what we did at that point is we actually launched a feature in Herdwatch that actually allows farmers to spot animals that are missing tags and actually order directly through their tag provider um, to get those tags back in it would, would literally within two days of spotting it. So we're just kind of helping farmers that stay on top of these sort of uh, I suppose paperwork burdens or farming farming issues that kind of that can cost you time, but also are things that you might necessarily think of after after the fact. Um, so it's been it's been a journey like that. Um, in 2020, then I suppose we had our some of our, our biggest launches to date. Really, we launched a next gen app, which was a culmination of about 18 18 months of work and six years of experience to to deliver an app that basically brought together all the features from the past six years, but did it in a way that was easy to use easy to use, faster, and just over, I suppose, an overall better experience from a farmer's point of view. And uh, to the point where today, where I suppose we're launching, hopefully our, our biggest our biggest feature innovation to date, where we want to help farmers who trade online uh, to add more value to their animals, to, to hopefully make more money from, from, the, from their produce or to buy better animals. So that's kind of an overview of, of her watch and I suppose the innovation journey that we're on and it, it is a journey now it's not something that that hopefully will ever come to an end but we're just going to keep listening to farmers keep doing our best to solve their problems and generating more value for them so i suppose one of the things we do really on on, on the back of listening to farmers is we ask them we ask them i suppose quite a lot of questions on an ongoing basis uh, and we ask farmers um I suppose where they sell the where where they sell their animals. So the results that came back in, we asked this question. I suppose year on year, we asked it last year, we asked it again this year. Uh, where the farmers sell sell their animals, and what they told us is, I suppose, kind of no surprise really that um, seventy eight percent of farmers sell their animals in the mart uh, today. The mart remains the most popular way of selling animals. I suppose. For a lot of people, it's it's the most traditional and, and, and the most easiest. Um, but then it's followed then by 67% uh, of farmers who actually sell their cattle directly to the factory. So these are uh, farmers that will um, operate either finishing units or calf to beef units, or will just will just finish a few cattle every, every year throughout the year to keep things tipping over. Um, but one of the big, I suppose, one of the big changes in 20 that we saw in 2020 versus the year previous was that there was a big increase in the number of farmers who were actually selling their animals privately. Um, and I suppose the three reasons for this enough, uh, COVID and everything that came would have changed how we all interact with each other personally and also as, I suppose as businesses and farm businesses. But, um, so far, a lot of farmers actually moved their sales online 
not necessarily out of choice, but it, it, it happened. And so really we want to try and, and, and help those farmers bring in more security to, to um, how they buy and sell those animals, try and ultimately make more money and buy better animals. So I in 2021, I suppose it's coming from a perspective of a small circular farmer in the west of Ireland and uh, leaning on advice and experts that, that we've, came, we've came across um, through the, down through the years. But really, when you're selling, selling animals, it's all about maximizing your, your value. So I suppose, how do you go about doing that? Well, the first thing is really, it doesn't matter if you're selling to a uh, mart or selling privately, it's about minimizing stress. You can minimize stress, I suppose, on yourself, first of all, and then on the animals. Secondly, it's going to make the process easier. But um, I suppose a simple way of doing this, if you are if you are selling selling animals in the mart, you're planning on bringing bring a load of cattle to the mart in the morning. Simple things like having them in a separate pen that you don't have to do go rustling or, or go changing animals in the morning, things that will cause some stress. And having them, I suppose, looking looking their best and, and feeling their best to kind of make, make sure that they... Um, that they are lively and they appear healthy looking and it's just it's a small thing but also you know it'll reduce stress on you too to try and make the process a little bit easier uh, i suppose the big thing is choosing the right place to sell so again whether it's selling to a thing selling yourself privately uh, on your own farm understanding what's the right way for you to sell it um, and the right place then so if i'm selling to a mart Certain marts will favour different types of animals. So whether it's a beefier animal or um, or or maybe or maybe younger stock, understanding that and knowing when when is the right time to bring into those places, uh, and then I suppose you know choosing the right factory. Obviously, always look for the always look for the uh, one that's paying the highest price for the animals that you're selling. Even if it's a case that you have one on your doorstep, there's lots of different buyers groups out there who will. Who are, who are looking to fill to fill loads of lorries, uh, and they might be going to the opposite part of the country. So there's ways and means of making sure that um, that you're always trying to choose the right market to sell your animal at the highest possible price. Uh, and then if you're selling online, it's about putting your best foot forward. And I suppose that's really what we're what we're trying to do here with with um, with this new feature. It's about if you have animals, making sure first of all, I suppose that they're looking well. If the case you're selling out of the shed, things like trimming their tails and their back can make them look a lot smarter and a lot cleaner. But also making sure that you know, if I am going traveling with them to bring them to a show or to a to a sale, that they're well fed that morning and they kind of that they're they're full looking. But then if it's the case I'm selling on selling online, if I have data, use it, I suppose. So we have a few little screenshots here of a, of an animal that's performing particularly well. You can see this animal. It's just, it's their herd watch uh, profile page. It's it's a eleven month old animal that's five hundred kilos and growing at one point eight kilos a day, and with a residency count of two. So if I'm selling that as a forward store, I know this is a very performant animal, and, and and to use this data, and on the right hand side here, I can see some of its um its Eurostar data. Again, it's 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 valuable information. So if I'm going if I'm going advertising this animal on Dome Deal and I have this information, use every every tool in your arsenal to try and, and maximize the value that you can get for them. Um, and finally, and I suppose most importantly, when you're going selling, make make sure your paperwork is in order. Make sure you have your blue cards to hand. Um, if you're if you're selling your animal on farm, you can do your movement certs or your movement applications through Herdwatch. So if I have someone come out on farm today to buy this to buy this bull i can apply for any he buys it off me i can um i can apply for movement certs there and then and hand them over to him so i know that i my paperwork is in order but it's i suppose it's about not just making sure that your site is 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 done but that the buyer also completes the movement cert so it's a two-part process just you know it's all about making sure that um that you close close the loop on these things because we would hear of occasions where farmers would would uh, create a movement cert and hand it over to the farmer and then would realize a few weeks later that the, the person who bought it often didn't realize they had to do that. So just about making sure that you uh, that this whole area is tied off. And I suppose the, the beauty of, of doing this stuff through Herdwatch is that if someone comes into my area today and I apply for movement cert through Herdwatch, 
I can actually get them to complete it fully on their side before they leave my yard. So within the space of literally a minute, I can have my movements completed. If it's the case they're on hard watch, they can um, they can notify it there and then. But if they're not, they can actually sign up to a free version of hard watch, which allows them to notify those movements in. So it really gives you, I suppose, again, all the tools to make sure that when I'm selling animals, I'm selling for the right price and I'm making sure that all my paperwork is tied up so I can... I suppose sleep soundly at night and know that I don't have I'm I don't have to worry about it going forward. And then when it comes to buying livestock, I suppose ultimately it's about choosing the right hand for your operation. It's very hard for anyone to give to give another farmer advice on what the right livestock is to buy because you know everyone has a different setup. You know you have different you have different land types, you have different farm systems, but it's about knowing the right hand will to buy for your operation, whether it's a suckler, you're looking to expand your suckler herd or get animals, animals in for uh, for summer grazing or, or you're operating a, a finishing unit, like you, you will know yourself what the best type of animal is. And it's about then knowing that animal and seeking them out, I suppose, and then using data to inform the decision of where, whether, where to buy those animals or not. And if it's a case that you for an animal, even better. So an example that our unfortunate example that we had over the past couple of months here is uh, we bought a group of peppers in that seemed on the surface of having was of uh, of being very nice and coming from a, from what we thought was a closed herd. But it turned out they brought in a number of diseases that we didn't really want. Um, so these are things that if I suppose if I bought from a farmer who was you much, I could have known ahead of time that if they were vaccinated, we wouldn't have these issues. So it's going to be prepared for unwanted guests because when you buy in animals, particularly if you're buying in for breeding stock, you don't know, I suppose, what diseases you're bringing in, such as IBR or leptospirosis or, or anything else. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of the more data you have, it will help inform your decision. So if I can call onto a farmer's farm today and look at buying a group of, you know, of spring and Spring and heifers, or or um, or, or even bulls for finishing. If I know that they they've been vaccinated for for uh, for a number of diseases, I know I won't face these issues when I bring them on farm. Because ultimately, if an animal is getting sick, they're losing your money. So you just want to avoid these things. And if, you know you can you can use data to back up these decisions. And and the beauty of all this is all this information resides within hard watch. It's a matter of bringing it out and being able to demonstrate it to a farmer if you're selling or looking for it if you're looking to buy it's, it's there it's there it's just to be to be to be asked for and again always remember your paper paperwork if you're if you're buying animals privately notify your movement starts in just stay up make sure you stay on top of that thing because it, it's it's the simplest thing to 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 get right but also the simplest thing to get wrong too so that's i suppose that's kind of um the buying side of, side of things and then when it comes to arrival into your herd, it's 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 a critical it's a critical time when you do buy animals. And the most important thing, and always the most important thing on farm, is safety first. So if you buy a group of animals, even if you pick them up privately on a farm and they look like a grand quiet bunch, you don't know how traveling has stressed them out or how anxious they've gotten. So just be careful when you're unloading them off a trailer that you're not in their way. They don't they're not they haven't got flighty. Just you know, take precautions because the farm is, is is unsafe at the best of times, and it's always about remember, remember not to do things. Take your time and 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 be safe. Um, I suppose secondly, then it's about thinking about the animals. So, if there is a case they are after having a, a bit of a trip, it's about making sure that you isolate them and allow them to recover. So, give have them access to hay, ideally, and water for a day or two, and. Look, the recommendations on, on how long to isolate them varies. It, it generally, what's what's uh, advised is impractical, but you know, it's for as, as long as you can can really afford within your facilities, but can keep them separate because one of the things with the, some of these infectious diseases, um, particularly um, IBR, is that an animal will actually would only spread it when they're stressed out. So, if, you know, if they're after traveling for an hour, a couple hours. They're going to be under stress, so allowing them to relax and to recuperate. Even if they are caught carrying in unwanted, uh, unwanted little bugs in them, making sure that they have settled before they mix the rest of the herd will have will have a, a major positive in, impact. And then, I suppose, finally, 
check when you're, I suppose, when you buy when you buy these animals, have they been vaccinated? If they haven't, if the case, um, the, you know, in the next or the next couple of weeks, I'm starting to buy calves off a off a dairy farmer. Should I be vaccinating these animals for pneumonia for um for uh, your um, PI trees and all, all these different um, different diseases that can cause can cause issues in young calves or even if animals come back into your, into your breeding herd, you know if if they're not vaccinated, you know discuss it with your vet. Should you be vaccinated? And 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 then a very simple one to do is always just do a test, like do a simple fecal test and see are they car- carrying liver fluke or worms because. You really, you know, you can ask the question, but even it's it's always better just, just to know. And rather than going out and blanket, um, I suppose blanket dosing for fluke and worms, you we have I suppose going forward, we all have to think of things around uh, resistance to dosing and just making sure that you actually you you treat animals at the right time in the right way. So that's just an overview, really, on on driving into your herd as most that that period. Um, and then I suppose just to back this up, really, you know, you know, some of the questions we ask farmers are: if you get the animal information uh, before deciding whether to purchase the animal, would you be more likely to buy it? Eighty-three percent of farmers told us that they would. And I suppose that's straightforward enough. Again, the more information you have about an animal, the better informed you are that you before you make that buying decision. Um, again. 73% of farmers think that actually sharing more information would increase their sale price. Because if you can give a buyer security, it's worth paying an extra, you know, 50 or 100 euro per head to know that I'm buying the right animal that actually it's been bold to uh, to an AI uh, sire. So I'm going to have a good calf. That's, it's been, I can see when it was last dose. I can see its vaccinations. You know, that data makes the animal more, more valuable ultimately. And then I suppose we asked them finally, would they be interested to share to um, share this information with prospective buyers on done deal? And a six nine percent of farmers told us that they would be interested in this, which is good because I suppose we are delighted to announce our uh, new partnership with Done Deal, where we've teamed up with the I suppose number one farming app has teamed up with the number one online uh, agri-sales platform, ultimately to help farmers harness the power of data to promote buying and selling animals. So we're delighted to announce Verified by Herdwatch, which really is a decision support tool that allows farmers to share the key buying and selling uh, information with other prospective farmers on, on done deal. So it just, I suppose it, it just gives uh, an element of more security to the whole buying and selling process and it makes the actual ad creation process for a farmer quicker and easier on done deal, but also adds a lot more value onto your onto your uh, done deal ad, which I'm sure Rob will go through in more detail in, in a few moments. Um, and I suppose we asked farmers, uh, we, when we discuss this, this feature with farmers and we asked them, what actually, what were the benefits of doing something like, something like this with done deal? And what they told us was sharing the animal data helps me increase their value. They want to know from a uh, from a buyer's point of view, they want to know what they're buying before they buy it. They kind of they, they want to save time by not traveling halfway down the country to see an animal that actually didn't suit them in the first place because it had four it had four movements on it. So I'm going to miss out on my quality assurance bonus. Um, and again, if knowing that you're buying from a from a quality assured herd makes a big difference too in terms of how long they have to stay in your farm if you're a forward store because it's all about getting animals to to the factory at the right time, minimizing your costs. So if you can stop someone from hopping in the jeep and traveling for two and a half hours to see the wrong group of cattle, it's going to save them money straight away. So really, I suppose what we're trying to do is as always, save farmers time, but ultimately try and grow their income by helping them buy the right animals and sell the right sell those animals at, at the highest possible margin for themselves. So quite simply, verified by herd watch is how how does it work? It's it's a very, very simple feature that if you open up the Herdwatch Next Gen app today, you will see the orange plus button in the bottom right hand corner that allows you to create any any record in Herdwatch. Within that, you'd have a new button there that says Verify by Herdwatch. All you have to do is, and I'm going to walk you through this, is basically 
select the animals that you want to you want to share uh, with Dundee and create a code and basically enter it on the Dundee uh, website or our web app. The information that you can share with other, with other buyers is breed, which is obviously a very, very important one. You know, we have limousine farmers that would not buy Charlie cattle, and then the lads who are still mad for Angus's. That's, you know, breed is for when it comes to buying your, 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 your animal, the breed is the most important thing. The age, weight, farm residencies, so this is the number of movements that an animal has. Um, the number of animals on that ad, whether that actually that animal has come from a quality short herd or not, the number of days that animal actually has been in the herd, or the range of days if it's a group of animals on it, the last TB date, um, if the animals are currently in withdrawal status, and if there are digital medicine records available. And I suppose this is one of the key piece, pieces. If you see there are digital med medicine records available, you can actually ask, well, actually, what, what has what have you done? Have you have you vaccinated those heifers? Have you um, did they you know did they have a hard calving before? You know you just you can you have that ability to get more data on the animals that you're buying, and I suppose the good news is that it's it's available for all our farmers today. So all farmers on our essentials plan can create three verified ads on uh, on Herdwatch today, and it's available uh, I suppose in an unlimited fashion to all our all farmers on our complete plan. Um, and Rob also, I suppose, has a has a an offer to to to, to announce as well on, on his side. Um, so I suppose with that, I'll I'll stop talking and hand over to to Rob. Yep. Um, thanks very much, James. Um, so I'll just kick off. Um, so yeah, um, I'm Rob Hume. I'm general manager with Dundee.ie. So. Um, I'm hoping just to run through a little bit about who we are and what, what we're trying to do uh, with the partnership with uh, Herdwatch. And then just talk a little bit about more about the farming sections on Dundee and how it breaks down between livestock, machinery uh, and equipment and things like that. Then I'll, I'll just chat a bit about um, what's happened with, with COVID and what's the impact online with uh, livestock sales that we've seen. And then a little bit around um, the trends we've seen in the first two months of of this year so far. Then lastly, um, and most importantly, I guess I'll be talking about how to maximize demand on done deal. And like, so our view is that more demand leads to better sale prices of your, your stock. Um, and just finish off some top tips around advertising. So just a little bit about done deal. So I guess um, done deal is the number one car marketplace in Ireland, of course, in the context of this conversation, done deal is the number one agri sales uh, online agri sales marketplace in Ireland. Uh, so we were founded in 2006, and we've been growing and, and adapting to buyer and seller needs uh, since then. So the whole mission of done deal is to make it as simple as possible to buy and sell online, um, and to make um, your jobs as sellers of cattle or sellers of farm equipment or machinery as simple as possible uh, to the widest selection of, of buyers out there. And I guess in the context of today's conversation, it's really about that in empowering good decision-making with uh, information. So that this is all about giving better information as a seller to increase the value of your uh, stock to buyers out there today. Um, so just a few stats on, on done deal. So, we're one of the largest websites in the country with about over a million people come to visit the site overall every um, month. And then of that, about 250,000, 255,000 uh, pe individual people go into the farming section to, to browse ads and to make purchases every month. So probably about 85, 90% of the overall mar farming market are probably uh, on done deal every month. And when they come on to Done Deal, they're really engaged. Um, so they basically, everyone who visits Done Deal's website every day spends about 12 minutes on site. So every every time they come on to our app or onto our website, they spend 12 minutes browsing the site. And when they browse the site, they look at about 10 ads uh, overall. So they'll browse through 10 different, 10 different cattle uh, in any one session on average. So there's some people who would look at a lot more. Um, and I guess that level of um, volume of traffic and demand 
buyers coming onto the site combined with the engagement makes us sort of the number one livestock marketplace uh, in Ireland and the number one farm machinery marketplace in Ireland. Uh, and we're always trying to make improvements uh, on that. So just some of our partners, we, we partner with a lot of uh, big agri brands um, and delighted to be working closely with um, Herdwatch uh, just launched in, in January. Um, so just a little bit a bit about the um, the farming section on Dundee. So I guess the headline number is that there's about 270 million ads are viewed on Dundee in the farming section alone every year. So in 2020, there was 270 million individual ads that were clicked into uh, by people browsing. So there's about 135,000 farms uh, in Ireland. So that means about every farm looked at 2,000 ads last year. So there's a huge amount of demand on Dundee for uh, for livestock and, and farm machinery and equipment. So it's broken down um, with about the predominant uh, demand comes in the tractor section. So about 30% of all of our ad views, people looking at ads comes from the tractor section. So there was 81 million individual tractors were looked at last year. And that generated about 430,000, almost half a million inquiries, people inquiring about those ads for sale. A close second to that is then the beef cattle section. So when it comes to beef cattle, that's really a, a huge section with huge demand on, on Dundee. And it was about 50, 48 to 50 million ads viewed in the beef cattle section last year. And that generated about 400,000 inquiries that and an inquiry is a phone call a private message that would be sent through the app so i guess the the, the key point is there's just huge demand online and that, that's been impacted particularly in the context of the last year so then you can see sort of a, lo a long tail so in, in, in the context of livestock there's beef cattle sheep and dairy cattle combined make up about 30 percent of all demand on done deal and then there's a long tail of uh, farm equipment and machinery that would be very popular as well. So a lot of our farming dealers would be advertising that kind of stock online. Um, so in terms of a typical year in, in, in the beef cattle section, so this just gives you a sense of um, the demand for cattle on done deal over the course of the year. So January, it starts the year in January, um, at about 100,000 ads are viewed on Dundee uh, every day. And then as, as the season progresses into March, uh, it peaks. So the peak season uh, from March to April is what we see on Dundee with about 120,000 ads viewed every single day. And then as it falls off, um, falls off into the summer months and then there's a second peak towards the end of the year from October through to November. And this is a fairly typical seasonality that we'll, we will always see. Um, with different animal types being sold throughout that period. Um, so I guess the takeaway is there's huge demand uh, in the peak times. So when it comes to advertising, uh, I guess we're coming into peak demand uh, now, peak supply. So um, that's uh, something to look out for. So in terms of um, in terms of what what happened during COVID, this is really. Uh, pretty striking slide, but this is what happened during COVID. So basically, uh, in around March of this year, March of March of 2019. So the blue line is 2019, the red line is 2020. So in March last year, when the restrictions were announced, you could see immediately that a lot of activity shifted online, a lot of supply of animals shifted online, and then a huge amount of demand as well. So a massive spike came in, during the first lockdown. And then it reverted back to sort of normal, but it didn't actually go back to the same level as 2019. It stayed about 20 or 30 percent above 2019 all the way through. And then it spiked again in a high seasonality period in October. So then finally, as we get back into 2020, this is how the year has started. So again, there was no COVID in Jan 2019 or Jan 2020. So it's about 30 percent of ahead of last year. So a lot of demand online, a huge amount of demand online for, for cattle. Um, I guess we'll, we'll see what happens over the next, and we'll, we'll, we track these numbers every day and we'll see what happens over this, but we'll expect the peak to hit around the same, the same amount uh, in March. 
Um, but overall, demand has increased about 45% year on year, and that's off a really high base of, of demand for, for cattle. Um, in terms of some of the data from the first part of this year, this is just some of the key, some of the the, the main breeds that are in are in demand. This is probably a function of supply as well, but the most viewed ads are typically in limousine, limousine Charlet, and then it, there's a sort of a tail uh, of breeds after that. And I guess one of the things we've done with Herdwatch is we've added more breeds uh, during the course of the last, during this integration, so there'll be more options for breeds uh, over time. But everything's really concentrated around limousine Charlet. So there's about, in the first 40 days of this year, there's about 2 million limousine ads were, were viewed uh, on Dundee. Um, so then this is just a quick slide on, on the, the animal types in the first, uh, in the first uh, 40, 50 days of the year. So calves and heifers are, are the, most, the most viewed animals at the moment uh, uh, in the first few, few months. Um, so I guess the, the point of that is there's a huge amount of demand uh, as you can see from the slides, um, there's a huge amount of supply and demand for for beef cattle. But then, how does how how do you go about maximising demand and sale prices associated with those animals? So the more demand you can get online, um, the the higher prices you command, the more inquiries and the higher prices you can uh, command. Um, and I guess one of James's points is when it comes to where to decide to sell, there's no there's no reason you couldn't. Obviously, the marts are up around 68% or 70% there. There's no reason you couldn't advertise uh, on Done Deal and sell at the mart and give yourself the maximum exposure in the market uh, to achieve the highest price possible. Um, so just in terms of advertising online, there's no like major surprises, I guess. I think it's um, poor quality ads. We have data to show, and we have a lot of data to show that poor quality ads put off buyers. So there's a few things that are constantly called out by buyers as problematic uh, when it comes to uh, buying. And I guess the message is for no extra cost and just for a minute or two extra time, you can really maximize and make the most of the key information associated with the ad. You can verify with Herdwatch, which will mean you'll get all the information associated uh, out of the box with Herdwatch, um, or you can add it yourself. Um, and then uh, that's one of the key takeaways. But in terms of the types of types of things uh, that are called out by users constantly, not having video is is a free tool that we have on site. So like you can add video. We'd recommend it. It gives a really good uh, gives a good sense of the animal. And um, so we'd highly recommend that along with good imagery. Uh, in this ad, for instance, there's no video. There's no herd watch verification. Pricing isn't accurate. People would tend to enter no price, one euro, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. That type of pricing like puts off buyers and it just uh, attracts time wasters when it comes to selling online. If you can give good indicative pricing, it gives a really good starting point for the conversation and it will stop time wasters coming through. Then uh, finally, um, it comes down to the information associated with the ad. So I think James pointed out some really good information that we've added in conjunction with Herdwatch around quality, quality short herds, TB dates, medicine records, uh, um, and confirm, numbers confirmed in the herd and things like that. So I think it's it's um, really important to try complete that information, which doesn't take very long. So this is just a, a view of what it looks like when it's looking, looking the part. So, Typically speaking, you'd like to have a lot of images associated with the ad. You'd like to have a video associated with the ad. Getting verified by Herdwatch, and I've seen some questions come through in the chat, getting verified with Herdwatch, by Herdwatch really gives you a seal of approval from a, like a third party verification that really uh, makes the ad stand out. Uh, and I can run through some of the details on that next. So having verified by Herdwatch, having good indicative pricing, uh, like a starter level pricing is really important. And then by um, by verifying with Herdwatch, you get all of this extra data straight out of the box without having to do anything. So you'll just have a really clear picture of the herd uh, for sale, um, visible to hundreds of thousands of users on Dundeo. So with that information, um, you increase demand, you reduce the scope for time wasters asking uh, asking the wrong questions, 
and you can really communicate the value that you've put into the animals uh, when it comes to sale. Um, so what does that look like when it comes to uh, demand and the data? So like we've advertised, we've we've been running this since early January in, in, in a test uh, and there's about 5,000 ads have been advertised in the beef cattle section overall. And we can see that when people enter the data, this is the result they get versus people that don't enter the data. So if you verified, you know, albeit it's off a small base on the Herdwatch verification so far because we haven't fully launched yet, but if you verify with Herdwatch, you generate 96% or about double the amount of uh, ad views and leads or, and inquiries. If you if you enter medicine records, so if you manually enter that the, the animals have medicine records, that generates about 60% more uh, demand. Uh, if it's a quality, if you mark it as a quality assured herd, um, uh, preferably verified by Herdwatch, then you'll generate about 82% more and so forth. So like one of the things here that stuck out to me uh, was when you show the range of residencies in particular, that generates 132% more demand than the ads that didn't uh, show any residencies. So I guess just the message is clear when you enter information about the animal and when you when you put a little bit of extra time into it, which doesn't cost anything extra, um, you do generate a huge amount more demand. And when you do it with Herdwatch, you should see about uh, double the amount of demand uh, for those ads. And they really stand out when you have that Herdwatch verification. They really stand out when you're browsing down through on your phone. I guess one of the things that really brought this about was uh, on done deal, we introduced a green light verification in the car section, which uh, gives a free basic history check of a, of a car when you're trying to, to buy. And we see very similar stats in the car section. So a green light verification gives a basic history check of the, of the car uh, and it leads to more demand for those cars. And this is very much, that's a proven across a large uh, set of uh, data. I guess this is pretty much exactly the same thing. It's it's basically a free basic check uh, associated with the animals that really makes them stand out. So last slide is just around the takeaways. So as I mentioned, um, focus on getting great photos online. Don't don't limit yourself. This ad here has six photos. There's no there's no point in limit, limiting yourself to six photos. Add as many as you can add a video if you can, because that really helps stand out. Um, when it comes to pricing, it's recommended that you do uh, provide some sort of indicative pricing associated with the group um, to really stop time wasters. Um, and then finally, it comes down to the detail. So providing as much detail as possible will lead to more demand. So you can see from the slide previously, the more information you have, the more demand you get. The more demand you get, the higher the prices we would expect uh, you to, be, to command. Um, and then the easiest way to get that information is verifying with Herdwatch, because then you'll get the full information out of the box from the Herdwatch app. And you'll also get the Herdwatch verification on the ad, which is proven to double the demand for your ad. So that's, um, that's everything I had. But if you have any questions whatsoever, we're happy to answer them. And um, I'll pass over to Owen. Brilliant. Thanks a million for that, Rob, and, and to James as well for those really, really brilliant slides and lots of information and insights. Um, my takeaway from your slide there, Rob, is I'd, James, I'd say you're pretty responsible for a lot of the views on those limousine and Charlotte cattle. Is that true? I was just thinking, I'd say I'm at least half a million of the 81 million tractors animals. I was thinking it would be a fairly high number, all right. Yeah, but um, no, thanks a million for that, um, both of you guys. Um, plenty of questions coming in. So, as Rob said, lads, um, if you have any questions for James or for Rob um, or for myself in relation to Herdwatch as well, you know, keep them coming. Um, I'm just going to, to move across and actually um, go into Herdwatch itself and do a quick demo on the app, um, just showing everybody the, the animal profile screen um, and where the verified from Herdwatch information comes from and, and what we actually can help you to send over to done deal as part of your advert. And we just have a really short video then, which takes you through the full process of creating your verified ad as well. And then we'll move into the, into the questions and answers for, for both James and, and, and Rob. Um, so I'm I'm just gonna actually bring up Herdwatch here now uh, for everybody. So 
might get you involved in some of this as well, James. Um, if that's okay. So uh, for everybody watching, or like I said at the start, if it is your your first time tuning into a webinar, um, this is hard watch, and obviously this is our home screen, which I, I, I know a lot of you are going to be really familiar with. So just going to bring you into the actual list of animals and drill into an animal to show you the information that's available, where it comes from as well on animals. So on your home screen, you can obviously click on your herd list within here. And if I was to just select any of my animals, James had some really good screenshots as part of his presentation, which shows the, the information and the breakdown of where it comes from as well. But, you know, all your animals profile, all the, the animals details and information is, is here to be seen and to be viewed and can be shared as part of your, your, your verified by Herdwatch app that you put on done deal. So, um, James, do you want to maybe help me out in, in terms of telling everybody where this, the, a lot of the information on the animal's profile comes from? Uh, I know like tag number, you're saying tag number, age, breed and gender is all synced down directly from, from the Department of Ag. Sure. Um, so I suppose there's a few different places the information can, can come from. Um, the core information, we call it the passport information, that comes directly from the Department of Agriculture in Ireland or BCMS in uh, the UK or, or uh, APHIS or DARE in Northern Ireland. So it depends really on, on what region you're in. But the, we'll say the core passport information comes from the regulatory body straight away. Um, so then I suppose the next level down is is the likes of your breeding data. So whether you're, um, I suppose, a dairy farmer or a, or a suckler farmer, we can um, gather your animal data from ICBF as well. So you can see the likes of your EBIs um, for your dairy cattle or your star rating for, um, for, for beef cattle. But then a lot of it is gathered by the farmer themselves. So you can see here we have an animal that's uh, 500 uh, kilos and it's growing at uh, 0 point, or 1.9 kilos a day average daily gain. So this, what this is entered by when the farmer is actually carrying out weight recording on their own farm. Um, so that they can get data from that, from, I suppose, by, by entering it manually. But I suppose within that you can see you've got an expected calving date as well. So this, this girl is actually, she's due to calf. She's, she's a few days out at, the, at this point, she's in the 8th of January. So she must take a couple of days with her. But so you can see when you open up the animal's profile page, you see all the most fertile. And this now, as a, a, from a perspective of a farmer buying beef cattle, I can see he's actually got a full residency or movable, which means that the next buyer of her actually won't be eligible to get the QA payment on it. So it's really, really valuable information. But thankfully, I can see she's a dairy animal, so that's probably not relevant. Um, purpose on the bottom of the screen, but still something to really watch out for, James, and and like yourself and both Rod pointed out that it's something that will be included as part of the the verified ad. So you know when farmers can see this on their on their on the the advert on done deal, it helps them to make a decision on whether to purchase, or it helps the buyer as well to to provide more value on their animal. Yeah, so like the the residency count is hugely important for any farmers that are. I suppose even selling store cattle or finishing them because the I suppose the quality assurance bonus um, is such a fundamental part of getting getting paid uh, for the for the final fin finisher of that animal whether that's you or the person you plan to sell it onto. So making sure that if uh, if it's an animal that that's on four four residencies, residencies here, I might need to finish that animal myself in order to maximise it because the next because it won't the next farmer won't get the QA bonus. So Knowing that data yourself on whether I actually, you know, go to sell this animal or where I should sell this animal, whether it's at a factory directly or um, privately or to the mart, you, you can you can actually make some of these decisions yourself rather than kind of being forced with a with a poor price without actually realizing realizing why. Um, so it's yeah, it's, it's just hugely important valuable data to have. Yeah. And as a, as a, as a seller or as a, as a potential buyer, when you see these ads on Dundee, you know, you can trust it as well because that ver verified information has come to us from the department as well. It's not something that we've made up. It's, it's information that you can trust and, and help you to make a really good decision in terms of, you know, yes or no on an animal. So thanks for that, James. So you can see that the full, the full animals profile is there and includes all that information, which is shared as part of your verified ad. And just for anybody that's maybe, you know, fairly new to Herdwatch again, you have other options here within the animal profile screen. You can view the full history of what you've recorded for that animal, selecting history here at that tab to see, your, you know, the weights that James just mentioned there. But if you've recorded medicine records, 
breeding records or body condition scores for for your dairy cows. It all shows up here. And you have progeny then as well, which will obviously show you the, the calves that have been registered out of that particular cow too. And even if you look with that animal there, if you go to history, you can see that it's been, it's been vaccinated for its rota, rota vet corona, which means if I'm in calves of this cow, I'm less likely to get uh, for them to have scar. So like things like that make a huge, a really good example of the type of data that you can share with a prospective buyer. You can say, well, I've actually, as a farmer, I've done all the things right here, which means if you buy these calves off me, they have the best chance of success on your farm. That's, and that's really what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that, James. Um, so at this point, uh, like I said, we're just going to move it on there again and just actually show everybody that's tuned in how we actually go about now creating your verified hat on Herdwatch. I know you had some slides on it, James, but um, rather than me demoing it, I, I actually have a, a video prepared um, from our marketing team, uh, team and Connor in particular who helped out here. So I'm just going to share this video and I'll try and talk you through the process of creating your actual verified ad as well. Um, so this video is, is just a little under two minutes. So it's all about the benefits here to start. So James and Rob have, have pointed those out uh, to you as both a buyer and a seller, you know, the, you know, the potential benefits from, from having a verified ad in Hardwatch as a seller. And then as a buyer, you know, having that information that you can trust and um, stuff like your, your residency count, the weight records, you know, is it a quality short herd that the farm uh, or, or the animal is coming from? So in Hardwatch, it's just your orange plus button and then verified by Hardwatch. Select the type of animals and the weights and very, very quickly, you can just then select next and pick the animal or the list of animals that you want to put on your ad and save. You can generate your ad code then and uh, just click the blue button and that brings in all the information that you can then review and uh, where you can see a huge amount of data there um, you know, on that particular animal that we're going to actually publish here on Done Deal. So once you've generated your ad code and copied it, you just head over to the Done Deal website where you can then obviously uh, create and place your, your actual ad. Um, there's nothing really to, I'm sure you're all very familiar with placing ads on Dundee at this point. So you can add your images, but take that advice as Rob was saying, you know, if you can get as many images images as possible and a video if possible, um, indicative pricing, you know, these are all the things to watch out for to make your ad, you know, potentially more successful than than other ads that are out there and, and bring give, give more value to your ads. Um, a lot of that information that's that's there now, Rob is on about the, the new fields is pre-populated from the herd watch ad that you've generated too. Um, and you can see how quick and easy it is now to just generate your, your add-on done deal. Um, when you click sell now, you'll just see that the, the finished product is, 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 you know, a really, really up-to-date ad with good pricing, really good data and information, which for you as a seller is, is, is going to help your ad. And as a potential buyer is going to give you a lot more value too on, on before you, you decide to purchase an animal. Um, so yeah, th that's, that's kind of the, 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 the trick and that's how easy it is to do so as james said from your home screen orange plus button create your verified hard watch ad select the type of animals that you want to sell and just save and generate your code and then pop over to done deal and actually create your ad from there and um, i think i'm right in saying both james and rob correct me if i'm wrong but we are you know for anyone that's in attendance tonight we we, we do have a little bit of an offer there for them in terms of creating an ad on done deal do you a little bit more information on that maybe rob yeah, so um, if you would like to to, to try it out, um, all you need to do is email um, herdwatch at dundeal.ie and we'll add three um, along with the email address that you use to log into Dundeal. And then we can add three free credits to your account uh, so you can try it out uh, this week, next week, um, and see see how simple it is. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Rob. So the, the key point there, um, everyone watching is, is it's make sure and send that email from the email address that, that's set up for your done deal account. So just pop that email over. It's hardwatch at dundeal.ie and the guys over at Dundeal will, will then add a credit to your account to allow you to, to get a, a free, uh, verified by Hardwatch ad up on Dundeal. Three, and three free. Three free. Even better. <laughs> Thanks again, Rob. So yeah, here's me thinking we're getting one. So three free ads, lads. So it's, it's an, it's a no brainer, really. So, um, Thanks to Rob and the guys at Dundeal for really looking after everybody uh, with that offer. Um, just going to move it on again, lads. So there has been loads of questions coming in. Uh, Mervyn's been really busy there for the last nearly an hour, I suppose, at this point. So um, I'm just going to jump straight into some of the questions that have come in. A few for you, James, a few for yourself as well, Rob. So um, first question uh, came in from Patrick. 
Um, he's asked, it's probably more for yourself, I think, Rob, here. It's uh, if you buy animals on done deal and after a few days after delivery, you're suspicious that, you know, uh, some of the animals have been treated to hide sickness. Do you have any comeback when buying animals on done deal? So um, we have a uh, so we have a, a buying privately section where you can do all that research. But I think the key thing is um, it's a private it is a private to private sale at the end of the day. So you have to do your due diligence with the seller uh, at that point in time. So it's really down to down to the buyer doing their due diligence. And I guess that's really the whole reason why we're doing this project because um, this partnership is to look out for the, the animals that are verified by Herdwatch where you shouldn't run into those kind of problems uh, that might arise when you're going straight to a, a private seller that has unverified ads. Um, but yeah, I guess the, the, the key takeaway is to do your due diligence on the on the animals in advance. Perfect. Thanks a million for that, Rob. Um, makes perfect sense. So hopefully, Patrick, that answers your question. Um, next one is probably one for yourself, James. Uh, it's coming from Sean. Uh, he's asked, if a dairy farmer has cows vaccinated, does he need to uh, vaccinate the calves as well? Um, I suppose I'm not a vet, so I, <laughs> any advice I gave wouldn't, <laughs> I couldn't send over it. I think, I really think that's something you'd actually question you'd have to ask, ask your vet. So certainly, um, some vaccinations, like for example, the road of Corona will vaccinated is actually you're passing on immunity to the calves, but I think it depends on a vaccine to vaccine. So really it's it's discussion with your vet. I want the farmer as well to find out why he's vaccinating them. Like a lot of the time is have this, you know, get the data and then have a discussion around it. So just get a bit more information ar around these things. Because sometimes the simplest thing to do is just ask the question that's on your mind and not maybe go away wondering or kind of having it half bugging you. Um, but really, if, if it is, if, you know, if, if you're wondering about it, just go ahead and ask your vet because they're the ones that really know. Yeah, yeah. I suppose just Rob's point as well, just to reinforce it, it's, you know, try and do as much of your due diligence at the time as well and before you make the decision whether to buy or not. So um, hopefully that helps, Sean. Um, nice message from me, Hall. He just wants to say thanks to, to James and Rob. He said uh, he thinks the partnership is a great idea and it's, um, it's going to help farmers both directions, buying and selling. So he says, big, big thank you from Michal there for for that. So thanks, Michal. Um, James, I think this one might be for you as well. It's from Jerry. Uh, Jerry asks, if selling on done deal, would you think it's wise to hold the cards uh, if paid by check until it's cleared, I suppose? Um, honestly, <laughs> it really depends. Like, you know, if, if you have a... If you've a doubt, a doubt around that in the first place, maybe, maybe that's you know, you shouldn't be going ahead with with that sale. Um, you know, it's it's sort of if you're if you're going to tell you tell you one thing, if they're that on, you feel you're that trustworthy, then maybe maybe it's not, it's not the right decision to make. You know, ultimately you have the power to make make these decisions. So it's it's kind of it's a hard one to know, really. Yeah, it's it's, it's a tough one to know, but I guess we'd always recommend to try and get. Pay as immediate a payment as possible. So nothing that, that might take a few days to clear, like checks would be very unusual on, on done deals. So um, uh, we would recommend sort of bank transfers, cash, and we've also introduced a new feature. So you can get paid directly into your bank account uh, using Stripe. So if you're actually logged into done deal, you, you should see a connect with Stripe, which means you can you can receive payment directly and the buyer can pay you on their card. Uh, so that's more, more instant. So anything that's more instant is generally, generally preferable. Yeah. Thanks for that, Rob and James. So uh, hopefully that helps you, Jerry. So lots of options out there. And I suppose with what Rob is saying, there's there's even more options now with the option to pay online and, and use Stripe to get, get that payment into your bank account. Um, next one uh, from Eddie. It's probably one for myself or yourself, James. Uh, Eddie's asking, can you trace your animal moves on Herdwatch? So yeah, you can see the number of movements on the animal profile page. I think we pointed it out there with the residencies. Residencies, yeah. So, and it's, it's a sometimes it can be a small bit of confusion there um, around the movements versus the residencies. And really, what um, what it comes down to, and what I suppose ultimately what's important is the number of residencies on an animal. So it's the number of farms it's resided on over its lifetime, and it doesn't necessarily matter if it's um 
if two if those farms have, have actually been the same or it's the same farmer what you're getting paid what you're what's important for the qa um bonus in a lot of factories is that it's been on uh, four or less four or less um different farms so it's in a case where an animal actually is moving to a separate herd to be for some of raising them back again all these counts as a uh, count as different farms that the animal has resided on that's really where sometimes it can get kind of muddled up movements versus residencies but it's that's what's important really understanding that it's the number of farms the animal has resided on over its lifetime okay james and i think you, you did point out in this part of your slides as well that you know if you do a transaction through done deal where you buy or sell animals that you know you have the option with herd watch to to do the, the movement permits as well, you know, the, the, the farm to farm movement through herd watch. So if you're the seller, you can apply for that movement straight away while the farmer is there picking up the animals and it gives you that peace of mind that you're on top of your paperwork and it's just not something that's been left on the long finger. So um, I think uh, there was a second part of that question as well, um, James, just about uh, the, the tracking of movements. Is there a way to track uh, the herds that it was on before? Um, so the passport would have that information. So you're just making sure you're getting the blue card and reviewing that. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, that's perfect. Um, question for yourself, Rob, from John. Um, John's asking, uh, is there much response, Rob, to the ads under the wanted section in Dundee? The wanted section is, is um, it's fairly low uh, in terms of engagement and the activity in the wanted section, it's, it's pretty low, so... Um, pretty much all of our focus is on the for sale section and that's the only area we really do work on and think about so there's there's not that much in the wanted section okay okay Brilliant. thanks for that rob uh we're actually up to our last question um james's last one for you is from natasha and um, she just asked what is a quality assured herd uh, uh quality assured herd is a herd that's taking part in a it's a voluntary scheme that farmers take part in in order to, I suppose, a particular bonus for whether it's a uh, milk or meat. Um, in Ireland, that scheme is called, called or there's actually various schemes in the UK, so it's red factors um, and several schemes in for uh, for Wales and for for Scotland. Okay. Um, and but uh, really what it is, the farmer takes uh, is based on extra requirements outside of what have to do with the farmer, say that they record, they're recording extra information, whether that's medicines or um, say mortality rate or recording their feed purchases. Um, so basically they can record a whole, they have to record a whole host of, of different requirements. And what this does then, it just gives an extra layer of traceability for the end consumer, if they know that actually this animal is reared on the quality assured herd, which means the animal welfare standards are actually higher on that herd, but also the traceability is higher. So just I suppose it's a it's a, it's a scheme that a farmer takes part ultimately to add more value to their end their end product. Okay, thanks, James. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, Natasha. Um, We've come to the end of the, the Q and A, lads. So thanks a million for that as well. So we're almost at the, the very end of the webinar, and I do just have one last slide, uh, just to thank everybody um, that that tuned in this evening, um, and just to remind you about you know the you know creating your your free verified ad uh, on Herbot if you're on our, our essentials plan, like James said. Uh, it's three free, three free verified ads, James. That's correct. That they can create on the Herdwatch app on Essentials and obviously unlimited on complete. And with done deal then as well, you know, uh, as Rob said, you can get access to three free codes. Uh, once you just send an email to Herdwatch at dundeal.ie from your, the registered email address on your done deal account. Um, and the lads over at done deal, like I said, will, will add those free ads to your account. So you can create your verified ad and get it up on done deal completely for free. Um, so no brainer to get going and, and see the extra value that you can get on, on your ads for selling or for buying animals. Um, James, Rob, thanks a million. That's, we've come to the end. Um, thanks a million for, for your time this evening uh, and for your slides. Which were so The insights were great. And I think everybody that was in attendance will, will get a huge amount out of it. So once again, thanks a million for your time, lads. And it's been really, really uh, great. And for anybody that maybe didn't get in at the start of the webinar don't be too worried about it because we're going to send you uh, obviously an email with a full replay to watch the whole thing back tomorrow 
Um, we will get it up on YouTube as well uh, towards the end of the week. But if we didn't get to any of your questions this evening, or if you do have any more questions you'd like us to to get in contact with, you know, you can pop into the app, use the message center as always. Uh, one of the support team can certainly get in contact if you have any questions or queries. The number is there as well if you want to give us a call or pop us an email. And do just make sure to get the, you know, the Herd Watch Next Generation app downloaded if, if you haven't got it updated yet. Uh, it's available on the Play Store and the App Store and obviously on, on Windows, laptops, PCs and Macs. So, um, yeah, that's it. We've, we've come to the end. Thanks a million, James and Rob, once more. Um, we'll be back with another webinar uh, probably sometime next month. So stay tuned for that. Um, stay safe and, and take it easy, everybody. Thanks a million. Thanks, all. Thanks, Rob. Bye. Good luck.